Hello and welcome to another LPM unboxing. I'm Sergio Angelos. I'm here today with Tim, Tim Goldsrud. This is my first unboxing. Oh, welcome! Here at LPM. Yeah, it's so a lot of fun. This is and this is going to be a lot of fun. Yes. I'm so tell us, Tim. Definitely looking forward to this. Tell us, Tim, what what do we have here? What are we going to unbox today? So this is an Allen and Heath SQ5 uh, digital mixing console. Mm -hmm. So um, it's. Audio mix, an audio mixer, and uh, it's going to be the new um, front of house console here in the big TV studio. Awesome. Um, previously, we've had a another digital mixer in here, a Soundcraft UI24, um, which has had a, probably about a, what a year and a half of faithful mm -hmm. service in here yeah, now. Yeah, it has worked well. Uh, it has worked well. Um, this this though is going to have some um, significant improvements hmm. over the UI24, and that it, um, it for one thing, well, it has it's an actual physical console that has physical faders on it. Okay, nice. Um, whereas the the UI24 only worked with um, the iPad. an iPad, yeah, which hmm. is great because you can you know manipulate it from anywhere in the room, but. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you know, Wi-Fi connections aren't the greatest and they're, you know. Sure, so you want some levers. You sometimes want... it's nice to have yeah. a Th fader. Yeah. You can put your hand on it and actually physically. <laughs> it's physical, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And, the, and also this, uh, this console will also still have the ability to be controlled from an okay. iPad. So oh, we nice. lose that function. Okay, so, great. Um, this console also, well, let's. Let's you unbox know, it. Let's unbox you wanna, it you first wanna, and we'll talk more about it. Do you want to cut the this. top and we'll, uh, we'll get to it? See what, I what the sucker looks with like. My, uh, nice. With my uh, Swiss Army knife here. Ooh. Okay. Carefully. All right. Open. Ooh, I see it. This looks like it's All right, nice. So and here, maybe we should set it down so we can lift sure. it out. Not too heavy. So what do we have first here? What is this? Uh, let's the light. Oh, just a box. It's just a dish. For stabilization, maybe? maybe? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll recycle that later. We will. We yes, will recycle yeah. this, yes. Okay. We'll turn it around like this. Oh, wow. Wrapped in plastic. Very nicely wrapped. Wow. Looks like we'll need to register it with Allen and Heath. Yeah. Wow, that there, looks beautiful. As I, as I mentioned, you know, physical faders, and these uh, faders are also motorized. So, hmm. um, motorized meaning what? Meaning that one of the things we'll be able to do with this console is set up uh, scenes oh, okay. for certain shows. Okay. Um, and then as you um, flip between different scenes, mm -hmm. um, the, the faders will are motorized, so they'll move themselves. Oh, really? To those oh, whoa. preset positions. Gotcha. Does that Very make sense? cool. Yeah. Um, the other th the other thing that this console allows is that while there are these sixteen physical faders plus uh, a seventeenth for the master fader, hmm. um, there are these buttons down here which select different layers. Okay. So even though there's only 16 physical faders, there's actually, I forget the total number of, of actual inputs you have available, but it's something like 64, I think. Whoa. Huh. So as you flip between these different layers, then you can access the, the different inputs oh, that are actually available okay. on, the, on the console. So layer A would be 16, layer B would be another 16. Would be like maybe 17 through 32, for example. Gotcha, okay, interesting, right? yeah. Um, so then as you flip between the, la the layers, you would see the, f the faders will go ch hmm. ch Nice. Pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> huh. um, this, one of the other uh, upgrades of this console compared to the Soundcraft um, is that it operates at 96K, 96 okay. kilohertz, in terms of sample rate. So it's a, a, whereas the old one operated at, operates at 48 kilohertz. Hmm. So this is operating at a higher 
um, higher audio resolution. Okay. For all the internal signal processing wow. and routing that it does. Um, we can also record directly from the console mm. that has a USB port here. And so by connecting a USB drive, we can um, uh, do multi-track recordings oh, wow. um, directly from the console, um, which is a, a I think, um, logistically will be a, a big advantage. Yeah. Because then you can record something here and then just take that hard drive right on down to the studio downstairs mm. and start mixing it. Cool. Nice. So this console is uh, oriented towards live sound. Okay. Whereas the equipment we have in the studio downstairs is a little bit more ori oriented towards hmm. recording, okay. as you know. Yeah. If we flip around the back, this is where, um, let's see if I come around this side, I can show you. Um, so this top row, you'll see that there are 16 XLR inputs. Hmm. So this is where we can connect either uh, microphone level inputs hmm. or line level inputs, analog inputs, I should say. Hmm. And then there are 12, so th this row down here are the analog outputs. Hmm. So um, 11 and 12 are uh, set up by default as hmm. the main left right output. So what gotcha. we'll do for the setup in here is we'll connect those to our main PA speakers hmm. in here. So that will control the main stereo mm -hmm. mix for what we hear in the space. But then we have the flexibility to set up an additional 10 mixes, hmm. which could be used in various ways. Okay. So I think one of the ways we'll probably use it in here is by um, sending, sending a mix to the cameras, like these cameras we're using right now to record this. Mm -hmm. You can, um, since each of these outputs can have a totally independent mix, Yeah. You set a mix for what you hear in the room, and then maybe out of uh, outputs one and two is what goes to the cameras, okay. for example. Hmm. And then so you can select mix one and two here, and you know, say so you have one mix for yeah. the house, sure. the, sound, the right. house sound, and then you go to mix one and do a totally separate mix. Huh for wow. what's going to the cameras, which is generally what you want to be able to do. Because okay. what you hear in the room isn't necessarily what you want to send to the recording. Sure, yeah, very so cool. The other thing we can do with these multiple outputs is um, if we have, if it's a situation with a, maybe a band playing in here, mm -hmm. and we have some monitors set up so, that, so the band members can hear themselves. Yeah then another common use for this is to create separate mixes huh. for each of those floor wedges, you okay. might call it. Yeah. Um, another thing that this console is often used for and kind of out there in the, the larger audio world is um, running um, mixes for in-ear monitors. A lot of musicians hmm. use, instead of floor wedges, they'll sure. use in-ear monitors. Okay. That requires having lots of different outputs because each member hmm. of the band generally speaking, wants to hear something a little different. Like the singer might need to hear a little more of themselves. Hmm. The drummer might need to hear a little bit more of the bass player mm -hmm. or... So, so you can customize having, all of that So you here. can customize cool. all of that. Awesome. Um, which is a, um, I think will be another big advantage. Yeah. And we'll just, uh, it's gonna greatly improve the, uh, um, our capability mm -hmm. for not only doing live sound, but recording that sure. live sound Absolutely, also. yeah. So then, you know, if you're mm. doing a recording session up here, for example, mm -hmm. another thing you need to be able to do, um, if you're recording a whole band at once, um, it's a, um, each of those band members needs to hear what the other people are doing. Right, Also, yeah. just like a live performance. Sure. And in that situation, they're often wearing headphones. Okay. Um, so with this, you know, we could create customized mm even stereo mixes for each for each person, each person. Wow. so you know we have 10 outputs here in addition to the main two so you could have if you can think of these as stereo pairs sure you could have five uh, yeah. five stereo mixes hmm. you know so you could do a band of five people and use this to um hmm. just do the monitor mixing sure but really send the recording signals to the studio downstairs where you're actually recording downstairs gotcha okay so nice. It looks like we also have like this S-Link 
network. Yep. And then USB 2.0, which I'm assuming you can plug this into a computer and have right. it recognize. It, can come, it, it will uh, work as a computer interface. Cool. So nice. yeah, we could um, set up a laptop here and you could record right hmm. to a computer instead of to the, just the USB drive, which is another option. Um, and the, this S-Link port is actually pretty cool. One of the other, because now that we're kind of in this Allen and Heath ecosystem, there are a bunch of other um, kind of ancil ancillary mm -hmm. boxes sure. that can work with this. And S-Link is their sort of proprietary oh. uh, format. And what allow as a future upgrade is to get a stage box. Okay. Um, that is a place where, you know, we, if this is the stage area up here, you know, you, you might put the stage box right here mm -hmm. and that's where you physically connect all the microphones sure. and, and also the outputs to kind of like the one we have over there, kind of like yeah. that one, except yeah. that one's all analog. And so what this allows is that whole stage box to be connected over a single cat five cable. Wow. So it's all communicated digitally sure. to the console. Wow. Um, because this, I, I I'm not 100% of the total number, but I think it's 64 input channels that it has. Hmm. If you have this connected, you know, you can have a bunch of inputs and then you leave these analog inputs. So they're I still see. available for additional. Wow. For additional uh, input channels. So there's quite a lot of flexibility yeah. and um, capability here that I think we can grow into. Very cool. Is there anything else you want to say before we wrap up this unboxing anything special or why we decided to choose sq5 over some other ones um well let's see that's a good question uh for me i think as a live sound engineer i really like allen and heath consoles because the the workflow is very fast hmm. um, very efficient um if we turn this around again um there are these there's a there are a lot of really key functions you can get to quickly okay. by these single knobs. First one being preamp gain, which is the first thing you need to do hmm. uh, to make sure you have the right signal level sure. coming into the the console. And so in this case, you know you can just select the channel you're working on, and then you have one knob nice. that you can work with. So it makes setup um, very quick hmm. and efficient mm -hmm. and um, I think the, the ergonomics of this console are very, very well thought out and it's really designed for a situation where you have to be pretty quick. Like we often do for sound post sessions, sure. you know, when we're, yeah. you know, we usually have a very limited amount of time to do sound check. And so you have to be able to get things set up and, you know, solve issues quickly. And so this is gonna be a really a game changer, I think, awesome. for being able to do that. Great. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm looking forward to learning how to use this and seeing it in action here in the studio. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Cool. Any anything else you want to say about this or questions you have? No, I'm I'm just you gotta, excited. You gotta peel some I mean, of this, you gotta peel some. We gotta let's, register let's it. Do that. Um, yeah. No, I mean it. It looks really nice. It feels, I mean, sturdy. It Very looks stable, like it's got yeah. really good build quality. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, as you said, an upgrade from, from what we have um, or what we've been using. Um, no, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to see this bad boy in action. There it is, now it's fully now unwrapped. it's fully unwrapped, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Well, well thanks, Tim. Thanks yeah, for we'll unboxing this SQ5, and uh, thanks for watching. Yes, see you all later. See you next time.